Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Brittany and today we're going to be talking about how you can best keep your wedding guests safe. <laughs> And it was actually a subscriber who suggested this video topic, so thank you, thank you so much. If I feel like I can help, if I feel like I have some answers, I will always try to make that video for you. So after scouring many Facebook groups and event regulations and protocol websites, I have come up with six guidelines that I would use right now if I were planning my own backyard wedding in the next month or two. This, these are the guidelines or precautions that I might put into place to keep my guests safe. What I'm really hoping for is that you're watching this from somewhere in the future and you're like, why is this girl recommending that we don't have mixed drinks at our weddings? What is this world of 2020 where people couldn't have mixed drinks at their weddings because it was too dangerous? I hope that like you're watching this and all of my recommendations in this video sound totally crazy and that the world is just back to some semblance of normal or wedding world at least. But I need to tell you like before you do anything, before you take any of my advice, I'm really just like some random girl on the internet to a lot of you. So please like look into the precautions or the protocols that you have set up in your own specific area where you live because honestly these things are changing every day. Every place around the world is really really different. So like what safe where I am is maybe not safe where you are. So don't just take it from me listen to experts in your area. I think that some of the things I say in this video might seem like overkill or kind of drastic or dramatic uh, precautions to take. And that might be true. Maybe where you live, these precautions are not necessary, but um, I'm just kind of gonna throw everything out there. I hesitated to make this video because I also know that with numbers and professional recommendations changing constantly, that I could say something. And then next week, there'll be a new protocol in place for you to keep in mind. So like, just don't take what I say as complete gospel and do a little bit of your own research in addition to this video. Okay, so the first category that I want to talk about is uh, preparation before your wedding slash like what to tell your guests before they arrive. And I'm really, really sorry if some of these things are obvious. I'm trying to cover all bases here. One thing is maybe letting your guests know that they shouldn't arrive early. A lot of venues won't let guests arrive early anymore. So like, you know, there's always those people who arrive 30 minutes, one hour early to weddings, but a lot of places you just can't do that. They're gonna end up sitting in their car. I would hope this one would go without saying, but if not, tell your guests if they are sick not to come to your wedding. You can give them a checklist of symptoms, maybe email that to them or send it to them in whatever way you're communicating with your guests and just let them know if you have any of these symptoms, even vaguely, do not come to my wedding. It might sound harsh, but you might also wanna tell guests that if they've been traveling in the couple weeks before your wedding not to come, or you might wanna limit out of town guests um, so limit your guest list to only guests that live close to you or set up a live zoom streaming as like an addition to your wedding so that if the guests can't come to your wedding they can see the wedding live on zoom of course you're going to want to limit the guest list as well and check in with local regulators whoever is setting the regulations for the number of guests you can have at your wedding and make sure you are within that number in this video guys i'm going to be saying things like you might want to or you should but it actually might be a law so check on that in your area you're probably going to want to let your guests know that they have to wear masks either Either like the entire event or like wearing ma a mask all the time except for when they're eating and drinking. A cute idea I saw is to send all of your guests care packages like either in advance of the wedding or as they're entering the wedding they would have a care package at every seat. I think that's the safest way to do it and essentially they would have a hand, hand sanitizer, an individual hand sanitizer kind of like a favor. You can make it cute like a cute little wedding favor hand sanitizer plus a mask and that could be cute too. You can brand it with your wedding Oh, a really cool idea would be to have everybody's mask have their name on it. So it's kind of like a name tag. Um, I don't know, maybe that's too dorky, you decide. And then also a note that either has safety precautions or sa like safety expectations for the event. And if you don't wanna print a card like this, you can just have a page on your wedding website with all of the safety precautions and maybe just like put a QR code in the middle of every table or around the event somewhere. And then guests can just like scan the QR code and go to your safety precautions on your wedding website. And before the event, let guests know how they should be greeting each other because in these new times, a lot of times we don't know if we should like hug each other, kiss each other, shake hands, it's kind of awkward. And so maybe make that explicit in your messages to your guests, like please don't 
touch anybody, even to hug them or, or shake hands or whatever at my wedding, we would really appreciate it if you could just like, I don't know, whatever the recommendations are where you're living, like an elbow high five or maybe just a bow or something, so maybe just a wave from afar. It's, it's goofy, but it will keep everybody safe. And it'll make everybody feel more comfortable if they know that that's what they're supposed to do and they're not trying to be rude or anything. Depending on where you are in the world, you might want to do temperature testing, temperature taking before the wedding or like upon entering the wedding, taking people's temperatures or maybe even pre-wedding testing. And I know that they do this at certain centers, like a rapid testing, although that's not available in a lot of places because you have to be showing symptoms in order to get that test, just so you're not taking those tests away from people who might need them more. Whew, this is a lot to think about guys. It can be both more expensive and more exhausting to plan a wedding in these times. But the good thing is that you're having fewer guests. So the money that you were going to spend on having tons and tons of guests now goes toward making your smaller guest counts safer and healthier. And I think I already said this, but I really like the idea of having a Zoom stream, even if you're not having a Zoom wedding, having it available for other people to watch it, especially like for those guests who are close to you, but are who are maybe like immunocompromised or sick or whatever, they can't make it to the wedding, but they can still really be there um, through some kind of live stream. Other things you might want to let your guests know beforehand or announce at some time during the event, just because they might be expecting it, are that there's not gonna be a guest book because a shared pen might not be a good idea. And instead of doing a guest book, you could let your guests know they're gonna you're gonna be collecting video messages, kind of like a video guest book, which in my opinion is better anyway. I kind of like, like being able to hear people's voices and see their faces. And if they know beforehand, they might even think to prepare like a little 15 second message for you before they come to your wedding. And then you just have somebody who's responsible, maybe like a cousin or a sibling or something who's responsible to going around to all the guests at some point during the, the event and just asking them to record their message on their camera or their phone or whatever. And then those can be compiled later into a cute little video. And because your guest count is so low, it shouldn't be that big of a task. And then probably you won't be having a garter toss or bouquet toss just to limit the contact. And there are other things you can do, other fun things you can do at your event. We're gonna be getting into this in just a second, in just a minute with the entertainment section of my guidelines. Okay guys, I'm gonna try to talk faster. I feel like this is gonna be a really long video. Um, okay, so the next thing on my guideline list are food and logistics. You're probably gonna wanna set up tables six feet apart from each other just to go with the guidelines that have been set out for the next for the last few months. So set your table six feet, six, I can't talk, six feet apart from each other. For a normal venue, this should be pretty easy because your guest count is lower. If you're having your wedding in your backyard, this might be a little bit more difficult, but try to space out the tables and then each table will be a household. So you're trying to separate people and then keep the households together. And that'll be important too, to let your guests know that they should just try to like stay with their own household and stay six feet apart from everybody else at your wedding. Again, I'm hoping that this sounds like me being a crazy person in the future if you're watching this from a year from now or something. You're gonna wanna ask everybody to practice social distancing at your ceremony and reception and to have assigned seating everywhere. So at the ceremony, make sure everybody has an assigned seat, group people by households, space them six feet apart. This is especially important if you're having your wedding indoors in a church or something like that. Try as much as possible to keep things outdoors if you can, but I know we're heading into fall and winter for a lot of folks here, and so that's just not gonna be possible. Again, masks should be required as much as possible, and try to have a sanitation station or a few sanitation stations spaced out throughout your event or your backyard so that people can just like boop boop, like squirt some, san some hand sanitizer rub it on their hands and uh, continue on with the event. A lot of the event websites I was looking at said um, no buffets. So try not to do buffets, but if you are doing a buffet, to have only the servers be touching the food or the tongs, and the servers should be wearing masks and gloves, and then you'll call everybody up by one table or one household at a time to get served food, and then you don't wanna stack the plates or and have the utensils all together at the buffet. Instead, set all the plates and utensils out on the tables, they'll start at the tables and everybody will bring their plate up to the bu buffet individually just to limit the amount of touching of plates 
as much as possible. Alternatives to buffets might be bento boxes. So you can have your apps, desserts, and meals all in a cute little bento box. If you've ever been to Japan or to a Japanese restaurant, I guess, you will have seen these. They can be really, really beautiful and cute. You could also do family style at each table because you have a household together at each table, so it doesn't really matter if they're sharing plates. So you could do family style appetizers, desserts, and meals if you wanted to. And then your other option is just doing like a traditional individually plated served meal, but this can tend to be a little bit expensive. You're really going to want to try to avoid things like past hors d'oeuvres or like communal food items like a bread basket or butter or salt and pepper shakers. And if possible in your budget, get somebody whose job it is to like constantly be wiping touched surfaces like doorknobs and things like that. Ugh, like. As I was researching this video, I was realizing more and more what an expense all of these things are. <laughs> you know, like, it, I mean, it's great to cut down your guest count, but if you were already having a small wedding, a lot of these additional precautions can kind of add up quickly. So I gotta kind of brainstorm a little bit how we can keep guests safe, but also stay on, stay on a budget. If you guys have any ideas, let me know down below. I wanna talk about the third category, which is drinks, how to keep drinks safe at your wedding. I mentioned this earlier, you want to cut out mixed drinks and that's simply because it limits the amount of like touching of things that your bartender has to do so things like shakers and iced and sliced fruit and all of this stuff so you, that just gets cut out and instead you'll just have canned or bottled mixed drinks which like on the market now there's a million of them and what we were gonna do for our backyard wedding is just have like big buckets of ice with canned or bottled drinks in them but I think now that's maybe not as safe because then everybody's kind of might be touching all the drinks so it might be safer to have a bartender or to hire your little cousin or someone to to bartend and have that person wear a mask and gloves and then so that one person is responsible for serving drinks I think that might be safer let me know what you think and also having an open bar or if you are charging for drinks not taking cash but really an open bar is is best I think I also read one person's idea which was to to use straws so I know straws are not great environmentally but using straws because then you can drink them more easily while wearing your mask so you don't have to take your mask off to drink okay the fourth category I want to talk about are bathrooms so back to hiring somebody to wipe surfaces so somebody can also be like wiping the bathroom doorknobs and the faucets and all that just to make sure that surfaces that are touched a lot are being cleaned and sanitized make sure you have enough bathrooms so that's usually in normal world one bathroom room per 30 to 50 people at your wedding, you might want to have a little bit more than that. You really want to avoid lines because having people wait in long lines can be unsafe and also boring. Like nobody wants to wait in a line at a wedding. Also, it depends on how the bathroom is set up. So if it's one of those bathrooms that has a bunch of stalls, but only a few people are allowed in at one time, you also have to keep that in consideration. And then make sure there's hand sanitizer available outside of the bathroom. So people might like have to touch knobs to get out of the bathroom, but then there's also hand sanitizer. So they're extra clean and extra safe. Okay, and the fifth category is entertainment and dancing. Very sadly, a lot of places are not allowing dancing at the wedding. You can do like a first dance, I think, at most places, but um, as far as the guest dancing, a lot of places have banned it. So if you're completely sad, you don't know what to do, you can't even do, at some places, you can't even do photo booths because the photo booth props are being touched by everybody and that can be dangerous. Um, there are alternatives to dancing. I made a video about this. If you wanna check it out, I won't bore you by saying the same stuff here um, but I'll link that video down below uh, if you need some ideas for dancing alternatives at your wedding and did I say I have six guidelines I have five guidelines but then I have some additional things that I just want you guys to keep in mind as you're planning your wedding these days as I was reading on a lot of websites a lot of venues are only allowing very minimal decor which can be good and bad it seems like that would be a lot cheaper but you have to keep that in mind because if you go out and you buy all this expensive decor or you've already bought all this expensive decor it could be that your venue is not allowing it so just check into that and when you're working out numbers and trying to, to determine how many people you can have at your wedding remember to include the officiant the photographer and other venues in your numbers and finally I want to say have a plan B for rain um, especially now because indoors can be dangerous so make sure that you're getting an extra big tent or letting guests know that it's possible they might be cut from the guest list last minute and I think it's a really good idea to just have zoom as a backup plan so if you end up only being able to have a tiny number of people at your wedding you can always send people the zoom link and they can still attend
10. Take it upon yourself to keep your guests safe. You might be having a wedding at some kind of venue where they have their own protocols in place, but I think if you're inviting guests to your wedding, it's still your responsibility to be on top of this and to know the safety protocols and precautions yourself as well. So kudos to you for watching this video and for trying to keep your guests safe, even though you have maybe a planner or a venue coordinator, someone who's also kind of, you know, keeping an eye out for these things, but you as well should be looking out for your guests. Wow, this was really long. I hope this was helpful, guys. Please let me know in the comments down below all the things that I missed or all the things that maybe don't make sense. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them the best I can. Of course, I am filming this in September of 2020, so who knows what's gonna happen? Who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow? Maybe all of this will be useless in, in a week from now. Um, or maybe things are very, very different where you live. So again, I urge you to check, do a little bit of your own research, check with things that are going on locally, and um, maybe also let us know down below in the comments anything super important that I've overlooked. And uh, good luck. Good luck, everybody. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna get through this, and um, we're gonna end up married in the end. So what does it really matter? <laughs> All right, bye. Have a good day.